What's going on guys, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna give you a simple trick to start crushing low stakes poker games like $1, $2, let's jump right into it. All right guys, so low stakes poker games like $1, $2, you'll find at the casino or even online. These are some of the top games that people ask me about. People ask me all the time, how do you deal with these loose, bad players who will call you down with anything, who play anything, you can never put them on a hand. Today I'm gonna to walk you through a step-by-step -step example hand showing you exactly how to be these players almost every single time. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so the simple trick to beat $1, $2 games is to isolate the crap out of the loose, bad players and then take them to value town. All right, guys, so as mentioned, these players play all sorts of trashy hands, call you down with anything, so let's keep that in mind. You have ace, jack, offsuit, ace of hearts, jack of clubs in middle position in a $1, $2 game. Standard spot, you should definitely be raising it up here, by the way, if you don't don't know what hands to play. I have charts in my free poker cheat sheet, which will be the top link in the description below. If you're new to the game and you just want to know what hands to play, you can download it. It's totally free. So anyways, you raise it up to $6 and one of our fishy friends calls you in the big blind. Now, I'm not one of the most politically correct poker players out there. Yes, I still lovingly refer to them as the fish, the weekend warriors, the beginner level players who probably aren't watching videos like this. They don't really take the game all too seriously they make a lot of big mistakes they play a lot of bad hands and they call you down with anything that's the kind of player we're up against in this hand because you'll routinely face these players in your low stakes one dollar two dollar game so let's go to the flop flop comes down with a nine of hearts king of spades and five of clubs we don't have anything on this board. These are the kind of hands that people always ask me about. You know, people say, Nathan, it's really easy to play when you hit your top pair, when you hit two pair of trips. I need to know what to do in spots like this when I don't have anything. So that's what we're talking about right now. So the fish, of course, is gonna be first to act in this hand. Hopefully you guys play a little bit. So you know the order of operations at the table. Our opponent is in the big blind here, so they're gonna act first on the flop. Fish checks to us, what should you do? All right, guys, so this is all about understanding that you need to be making making a flop c back here the large majority of the time because it simply is going to turn a profit for you. Let me break this down for you. Number one, flop c bat. what does that mean? A flop c bat stands for continuation bat. This is you are continuing the aggression that you already started before the flop and you're going to apply more pressure now on the flop in order to try to persuade this player to lay their hand down so that we can win the pot. So as mentioned, a flop of nine of hearts, king of spades, five of clubs is not a very good flop for our hand. I mean, this is one of the worst flops possible. However, it is unbelievably important that you remember that two things here. Number one, this is a very dry and uncoordinated flop, meaning that there are not very many potential draws. There's no flush draw on this board. This is a rainbow flop, three different suits. So there is no flush draw. There's no conceivable straight draw. There's a couple gut shot straight draws, but there are no open-ended straight draws on this board. So there's not a whole lot going on. On. While it is conceivable, this player could have hit a pair on this board. The other thing, number two to remember, is that with a random hand in Texas Hold'em, you are going to miss the flop around two out of every three times. So even though we have nothing right now, guys, it is unbelievably important to remember that 66% of the time, this player has nothing too, and likely our nothing with ace-jack high is actually better than their nothing. So what does all this add up to? This all means, putting the pieces of the puzzle together here that we should be making a flop continuation bet a large percentage of the time here in position, getting to act last here, because we know that even fish are going to fold their nothing hand sometimes, and since we're only gonna bet a small amount of the pot, around 50% of the pot, for example, the pot's $10, you bet $5. Since we're betting a small amount, since we know that even bad players will fold their nothing hand sometimes, we know that this small bet is absolutely going to to turn an immediate profit for us here. So video over, right? No, that's not very interesting. So let's assume that the fish calls us so that you can see how we're gonna play this hand throughout. So let's move on to the turn now. So the turn comes down with the Jack of Diamonds. Very, very interesting card because we now have second pair best kicker. So guys, this is all about taking them to value town in a spot like this. And what I mean by that is a value bet in poker is when you have a strong belief that you have the best hand. We're gonna break down 
another entire range here in a second, just so you understand more of what I'm talking about. But in this situation here, fish checks to you again on the turn. Remember, they're always going to be acting first throughout the entire hand because we are in position. They are out of position. What should you do? You should make a strong value bet here. Remember, we just talked about that value bet with your ace jack of 75% of the pot. So value bet. We have a strong belief. We have the best hand here. We're going to talk about the range one sec here. And 75%. Why do we bet more now? The reason why, guys, is because we want to make them understand, number one, we're serious. It's going to be very expensive for you to chase whatever ridiculous draw you got on this board. And number two, we just want to get paid. It's that simple. You're not getting paid when you're only betting 50% of the pot. So you want to bet more. We know that players like this like to call with all sorts of trashy hands. Let's go through some of those trashy hands right now. So remember that these players play literally like 50% of all hands dealt to them pre-flop. So this player absolutely can have a hand like, let's count them all, ace nine, queen nine, 10 nine, nine eight, nine seven, running out of fingers here, nine six, ace five, queen five, eight five, seven five, six five, pocket tens and pocket eights. Honestly, there's dozens more hands here, guys. These are just a couple of the hands that one of these loose bad players that you'll encounter in $1, $2 games that they're likely to have in a situation like this. And what do we also know about our fishy friends is that they absolutely love to call. They don't like to fold a hand like this, especially when we're playing for small amounts of money in low stakes games. So guys, this is what you need to remember. This is the really important point here is that yes, they will have a king some small percentage of the time. But guys, you need to understand that we play against ranges in poker, not a specific hand. We always need to remember that versus a very loose bad player like this, they are very likely to have a large percentage of the range here that is some sort of hand that we are significantly ahead, like a worse pair, like some sort of draw. But anyways, it's not an interesting video if we end it now, so let's assume that the fish calls us once again. So let's go to the river, and this is all about firing the third bullet for massive value. So river comes down with the three of hearts. So the full board now reads a nine king, five jack, three with no conceivable, no possible flush on this board. So the fish checks you once again, and what should you do? Well, guys, this is the spot where a lot of decent players will just give up. They'll check behind. They'll say, you know what? You know, I got a strong hand here. I have a good pair, but you know, this player's called me all the way down. Maybe they got a king. You know, maybe I'll, I'll just be a little bit cautious here. I'll just go to a showdown. I'll check behind. Guys, I take a different approach in a situation like this. You want to make a strong value bet once again in this situation of, again, 75% of the pot. Why do I do this? Again, it's all about player type, player type, player type in this video, guys. When you are up against these loose, bad players in low stakes games like $1, $2, you have to understand, we just went through the insane range of hands that these players can have in this situation that we are still ahead of, and we just got the brick on the river. The three of hearts completes zero draws. It's very unlikely that they hit some sort of two pair. I mean, even fish don't play hands like nine, three or king three all that often. They do fold some hands pre-flop. So the three absolutely changes nothing on this board. It's a great card for us. So you want to be getting maximum value here against these guys. And you know, I think that the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is that they'll fire the third shell here and the player turns over king, queen, and they remember that hand so much. It's seared into their memory and this makes them gun shy the next time a situation like this pops up. But guys, like I said, we always have to remember that a king or some sort of weird straight or some sort of bizarre two pair on the river, this is a small percentage of their range. The vast majority of their range here, guys, is some sort of middle pair, some sort of hand that we are still significantly ahead of with our second pair nut kicker on this board. Guys, the bottom line here is getting the absolute maximum value out of these bad players is literally how you crush low stakes games like $1 or $2. I wrote an entire book about it. It's called Crushing the Micro Stakes. This is how I literally created some of the highest winnings of all time in low stakes games like this. I'll link that up in the description below as well. But guys, like and subscribe if you found this one helpful. And also make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet, by the way, as well. That'll be the top link in the description below. I think that will also help you tremendously if you're struggling in low stakes games like this. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope a few of the tips in this video helped. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.